are at war. Captain Marvel, we need you to save the world. Then let's do this. You took everything from me. So we want to fight? You come up, protect your people. Watch me. We can't do this alone. We need Captain Marvel. You took everything from me. And now I'm returning the favor. That's not good news. She's targeting every planet we call home. We have to stop her. Together. Higher, further, faster. The Marvels. I called a friend. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There's a bunch of new Marvel trailers with a ton of new footage and Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. They're teasing a big Thor cameo, literally and metaphorically, and we just learned that Quasar was a big part of the movie, so I'll explain how they're going to include that character. I know there's a bunch of questions on top of all this stuff recently because of the Marvel reboot talk going around. I'll explain how that's going to affect these characters after Secret Wars. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're in the middle of the Loki season two episodes right now. I'm doing videos for all of them. There's some loose connection with what's happening in this during Loki season two, Doctor Strange three and Avengers five. The Marvel's movie is supposed to go way deeper into the concept of incursions, which are leading up to Avengers Secret Wars eventually. I mean, it's a big part of Avengers five too and Doctor Strange three. But the whole idea is the different universes are colliding with each other, destroying one or each of them. Supposedly, we're going to see one going down during the events of this movie, like they try to stop one from actually happening during the movie. And it has something to do with Darben's universal weapon that she's using in combination with the power of Miss Marvel's other bangle. The big Thor cameo everyone was talking about recently in the footage here is the end of the most recent trailer. Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, Miss Marvel all fighting Darben, the Kree army, and it looks like they're in Earth's orbit here. And I think this scene is meant to be from like the big final battle. I believe Dar Ben brings her giant universal weapon to Earth to retaliate against Captain Marvel like a measure of last resort, like, okay, fine, we'll come to your home planet. The movie is also going to explain where Captain Marvel has been this whole time. She's basically been destroying the Kree left and right in Kree scroll space over here, like if you look at the map of the galaxy, this is the part of space she's been in most of the time. Ever since the end of the first Captain Marvel movie in the 90s, that's why they call her the Annihilator in the trailer, which is obviously a big Annihilus reference, but it's also a reference to her basically annihilating their people. There was a deleted scene from the first Captain Marvel movie of her killing the Supreme Intelligence in its true comic book form. This movie treats that like it was canon. So I believe the idea they're going with in the movie is that after the Supreme Intelligence died in the 90s, Captain Marvel went on a campaign of annihilation, to make more Nihilist references, destroying as much of the Kree's military and civil infrastructure as possible. Bringing their entire race to a standstill, like crippling them almost to the point of extinction, so they're kind of in the same spot that the Skrulls wound up in after the kree Scroll War. Like basically their entire race almost wound up dying out. That's why the Kree hate Captain Marvel so much when this movie picks up. That's what she means when she says, you took everything from me, now I'm going to do it to you. Speaking of Loki connection too, this is Zawe Ashton playing Dar Ben. She's the leader of the Kree people when the movie picks up. She's also in a relationship with Tom Hiddleston. I don't know if they're engaged or they're actually married, but they just had a child together. So there's like a big Marvel family developing here. But at some point at the beginning of the movie, Dar Ben finds Miss Marvel's bangle on this other plant. Like you see them digging it up and she adds it to her hammer here. She uses that power in combination with the giant weapon, and the weapon is designed to steal the resources from any planet in the galaxy using these special portals. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. So she's trying to keep the Kree race alive. They're on life support, basically, stealing resources they need from other planets. And because the Kree hate Captain Marvel so much for their current, like they blame her for everything that happened to their race, they primarily target worlds that she's friendly with or that she's been to. The last one being the Earth itself. Like there's a bunch of footage of them on Earth, but there's a little bit. That's why in all the trailers you see Nick Fury on his Saber space station yelling at all the other workers, calling them to battle stations. Like they're in the middle of a full scale Kree assault. Then I believe the idea is that all three of them, like Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, Monica Rambeau, with Nick Fury, the Saber Space Station, are not enough to stop the Kree army from destroying Earth and taking its resources. So as she says, she quote unquote, calls a friend who arrives using the Bifrost. 
Normally when people see the Bifrost, they think of the Thor character because he can open Bifrost portals using Stormbreaker, but I actually think this is meant to be the Valkyrie character she calls from New Asgard. Mostly because they're doing the whole female team up thing in the movie and they use the A4 scene from Avengers Endgame in the trailer. They really want you to remember that moment when she says she called a friend. So who is the girl in that A4 scene who typically would be using the Bifrost? It's Valkyrie. Now the reason why Thor wouldn't be around to help save Earth, this is always a question anytime there's anything happening anywhere near Earth, like where are all the Avengers characters who are still alive right now, why are they not helping out? Right now mostly Thor is like in another part of the universe with Gore's daughter just saving random people, trying to act like a god should act, like helping the people who are worshipping you. Now if they hadn't left at the end of that movie to go do that in that space version of the Winnebago, like they went full space balls with the space Winnebago. Normally I would say Thor would be the one to show up to help out. He and Captain Marvel also had that bro off moment in Avengers Endgame where he basically told her that they would be cool. Unless there's like a special Thor cameo at some point during Loki season 2, I don't think Chris Hemsworth's Thor will come back until Avengers 5. All the Quasar stuff in the movie was supposed to have been removed, so it's like deleted scene status now, but they were gonna use flashbacks with Quasar's character at the beginning of the movie to explain the true origin of Miss Marvel's bangles because they were going to canonize them as being based on the quantum bands of Quasar and the Kree Negabands. The quantum bands and the Kree Negabands are like two completely different things. The quantum bands give the wearer control over all electromagnetic energy and they draw power from the quantum realm. Thus the name, quantum bands, they can be used like green lantern rings to create energy constructs. The bands also gave Thanos' parents, a Lars and Suisse, and the ability to conceive children, which is how a couple of Eternals robots on Titan can have biological children, answering the question everyone wondered, like how can Thanos have been born if his parents were Eternals and all Eternals are robots? Maybe they'll get into that in like some other Thanos related story like there's a bunch of Eternals related stuff that they can do with Thanos' character much earlier in the timeline when he was younger. They teased his brother at the end of the first Eternals movie Eros so if they're going to be doing more with his character at some point in the future that would be the path to doing more Thanos stuff in flashbacks. The quantum bands are also supposed to have been the prototype for the Kree Nega bands which are also kind of like Green Lantern rings. They allow you to turn mental energy into physical form so you create constructs or give off energy blasts kind of like you saw Miss Marvel doing during the Miss Marvel series. Apparently they would have shown the original version of Quasar at the beginning of the movie getting killed off to show how he lost the two bangles and one wound up on Earth in the Ten Rings Temple at the beginning of the Miss Marvel series and the other wound up in this distant planet. James Gunn just introduced the newer version of Quasar in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, the Phyla Vell version of the character. Phyla Vell was important because she was Quasar during the Annihilation Conquest storyline, which is where this modern version of the Guardians of the Galaxy team that we see in the MCU came together for the first time. She also joined the Guardians of the Galaxy team in a later roster just like Adam Warlock, who was also in that Annihilation Conquest storyline working with the Guardians. Phyla Vell is also meant to be the daughter of the original Captain Marvel, Marvel. so there's a connection to the Marvels through her character. But as of me posting this video, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know if there are going to be any cameos. The big difference with her character in this movie is that she's obviously much younger, and during that Annihilation story, she had already become Quasar, taking the Quantum Bands. Usually you don't take the mantle of Quasar until you're given the Quantum Bands. Another big connection to the Marvels movie through the Bangles and the Quantum Bands, they're meant to be relatively similar. Since they removed most of the Quasar stuff from the Marvels movie, we'll probably see more Quasar related stuff in future space based movies. Kevin Feige teased that they'd be doing more of that recently, like more genres which include more space based movies besides Guardians of the Galaxy. Now the whole Marvel reboot thing that's going down, all this recasting talk, is pretty simple for the characters in the Marvels movie. It won't really affect them that much or the plans that they have for those characters, with a few exceptions maybe, like we have a bunch of X-Men stuff coming up, we're going to pivot to X-Men stuff after Secret Wars. But like that's one of the reasons why they just canonized Miss Marvel as a mutant so she can cross over with those X-Men stories. But like none of them are supposed to be recast, like Brie Larson could decide that she doesn't want to make more Marvel movies after Secret Wars, that would be like the only character that they would recast and that would be the only situation where they do actually do that. Monica Rambeau is just going to continue as per usual, Miss Marvel like I said. The way that Samuel L. Jackson talks about the future of Nick Fury, he makes it sound like they'll have to pry his gold dead hands off of his scripts in Marvel movies, like they'll have to drag him kicking and screaming out of Kevin Feige's offices to keep him out of Marvel movies, so unless he dies of natural causes, he will just continue to be in Marvel movies. 
There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. If we see any more big Easter eggs or anything else, I'll do more videos for the Marvels movie. But my full Loki Season 2 Episode 3 video will post on Friday just like normal. Click here for that. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here to learn about the big Marvel reboot. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.